Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to model steel bridge structures in STAD Pro Connect Edition. This course was designed for the students competing in the ASCE AISC Student Steel Bridge Competition. In this particular video, we're going to be using the graphical user interface tools to model structural members in STAD Pro. We are now going to turn our attention back to our sample model where we already have our lattice truss created. We're now going to use this truss and add on to it to create our complete bridge structure. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of additional nodes that I'm going to be needing for the next step. I can do this simply by going into the nodes table in the data area and entering my nodal coordinates. My first node is going to be at x equals 4.5 feet and y equals 3.25 feet. And you can see my nude node has been created. I'm going to create an additional node at 13.5 feet and 3.25 feet. And you can see the other additional node has now been created. The next tool we're going to utilize are some of the tools within our ribbon. Now to access your ribbon tools, you're going to go to your page control area, select your geometry tab, and then in the ribbon, you're also going to select your geometry tab. And we're going to start by using a couple of our beam tools. Now if any, at any time your beam tools are inactive, just come into your main window and click in anywhere in the main window and the tools should become active for you. The first thing we're going to take a look at is your add beam tool. Now within this tool we have several different options. We have our basic add beam command which would be used to create beams between two nodes. Now the nodes may be existing or they can be dynamically generated at the time of creating the member. We can also use some of these tools to add a beam between midpoints or add a beam by perpendicular intersection. We're going to start by just using the add beams tool, which is just the basic tool. When we click on this tool, you're going to notice that your cursor is going to change shape. And if we take a look at the status bar at the bottom of the screen, we can see that the program is telling us what to do next. So it's asking me to click on the node at the starting end of the member. And I'm just going to use some existing nodes in this model. So I'm going to click on my first node and you're going to notice that my cursor is kind of rubber banding back and forth. And it's going to do that until I click on my second node to define my member. So I went ahead and clicked on my second node. Now I can repeat this process for any type of member that I want to create while this tool is still active. So here I can select different members. I can model them as I need to. And I can draw them in my model. Once I'm done with this tool, I'm going to want to come back to my ribbon toolbar and then click that tool again. What that's going to do is it's going to deactivate that tool so that way I'm not still continuing to model members. Now the next tool we're going to take a look at is the insert node command. This command can be used to break a member into two or more elements. The first, to start this command, you're going to want to select the member you want to split. So I'm going to use my beams cursor and select my top cord member. Then up within my geometry tab in my ribbon toolbar, I'm going to find my insert node icon. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and then the dialog is going to appear, which is going to allow me to select the location for where that new node is going to be located. Now I can break it into multiple segments using the add end points option. I can create a new point by entering a distance or proportion of the length, or if I want to enter this directly in the middle, I could just say add a midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and say add a midpoint for this option. It's going to go ahead and add node 57 at that location. It's telling me what the location is in reference to the starting end of the member. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see that my new node has been created. Now I didn't just create a new node, I actually segmented this node. So it used to be one constant member and now it's two separate members. Now with this node I can go ahead and use my add beam tool again and 
I can use that to start creating model geometry as well. The next tool we're going to take a look at is the translational repeat command. Now this command can be used to copy or repeat the entire structure or a portion of the structure in a linear direction. Our first step to using this tool is to select the members you want to copy. And for this model, we're going to draw a fence around the entire structure to select all of them. Next, we're going to go to the geometry tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the translational repeat icon. Here we can create a copy of the structure or multiple copies of the structure. We need to select first the global direction for the copy and I'm going to select the global Z direction. I'm going to enter the number of steps. I'm going to enter one step and then I'm going to enter the spacing between the rails. So I'm going to go ahead and say four feet. In addition, I can create all of the geometry as it is or I can select certain pieces of the geometry. So if I select the all, that basically means if I already have loads and properties or specifications assigned to the model, basically all that information will be copied over to the next adjacent truss as well. The last thing we're going to do is the step to link steps. Now, if you would like all your nodes in this truss to be connected to the adjacent truss with a corresponding node, you'd want to go ahead and select that link steps icon to have those members automatically generated for you. We're going to go ahead and leave that unselected for this exercise. Once you're done, you can go ahead and click OK. And then you can see that with just that starting two-dimensional truss, I was able to very quickly create my three-dimensional bridge structure. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just complete the rest of my model geometry using any of the tools that I learned how to in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and use mostly the add beam tool to create whatever additional members I want to create in my model. The final step I'm going to do for this particular model to complete my workflow for the modeling process is to create some physical members for my top rails of my support truss. The reason I'm going to do this is because it'll make it a little bit easier for me later on to add the loading conditions as described in the specifications for the student steel bridge competition. So I'm going to select my first physical member, which is going to be my top cord of this far truss. I'm going to hold down my control key. I'm going to select each one of these top cord members. Now, once I've done that, I can go ahead and tell STAD Pro that I want it to form a physical member. So I'm going to go up to the Geometry tab in the ribbon, and I'm going to click on the Form Member icon. Now, if I want to see the results of that command, I can also select the Physical Member Layout command, and I can see that a physical member number one has been created, and it includes all of these members. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're creating physical members in STAD Pro is that certain requirements need to be met for two particular members or a group of members to be joined together to form a single physical member. The first thing is that all of the members need to have the same exact member orientation. The second thing is all the members must be interconnected and collinear. 
And then the third thing is that all of the members must have the same section properties assigned to them. If all of those three things are met, then we can form a physical member. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process for the top chord of the adjacent truss. Let's return back to our isometric view so we can see everything that's been assigned so far. Now what I'm going to do for my last section type, my circular section, I'm going to start by... This video is part of the Modeling Steel Bridge Structures video series. A link to the series playlist is available here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.